if we want to understand the cycles of cosmic catastrophe, then we have to begin with the data. We have to understand the data and what it's telling us before we can begin to prepare. Preparing would be a waste of time if the scientific facts of what we're living are not provable or explainable. So we're going to start tonight with showing you the last half a million years on Earth. The Pleistocene Ice Age, so to speak, which we are still in. Modern normal global temperature is marked. And you can see here that there have been one, two, three, four, five interglacials. These are areas above the red line, the maroon line. They happen about every 100,000 years. Now, the last cycle was longer than most. But I want to draw your attention to the fact that if we start here at the first major spike at about 410,000 years ago, there was a small 100,000 year cycle and then a slightly larger one and then an even larger one after that and then an even longer one after that. So clearly, these cycles are increasing in length. The 100,000 year quote unquote cycle. But I also want to draw your attention to the fact that after all of these interglacials, a rapid drop in temperature. In this case, the temperature anomaly dropped almost 14 degrees centigrade. In this cycle, 14 degrees centigrade. In this cycle, 14 degrees centigrade. In this cycle, 14 degrees centigrade. Where do you think we're going to drop here? Now, on top of the large-scale cyclicity, you're looking at Antarctic data, Greenland data, ocean sediment data, all correlating, corroborating the story of catastrophe, climate catastrophe on Earth for the last half a million years. Here is another graphic of the same data set. Now, the only thing that's added to that is dust. So you can see as the glacial max ensues, the dusts increase. And this is due to all of the water vapor being locked up in glaciers. So the land becomes very arid and deserts form. And the same thing can be seen here, an increase in dust, more and more dust as we get closer and closer, as the cycles get longer and longer and deeper and deeper and colder and colder. And within these 100,000 year cycles, you're looking at one of them. They're smaller scale cycles. Each of these cycles is a cosmic catastrophe in its own right. So you can see here in the last 90,000 years, there have been dozens of cosmic climate catastrophes where the temperature rises instantaneously, almost 10 degrees, and then drops right back down again and again and again. You can see major spikes here, here, and here, and here, and here, and here. These are corresponding to magnetic reversals or excursions, which we now know in the last decade have happened periodically and episodically, regularly, on about a 12,000 year schedule. So what are we to make of all this? Well, the current scientific consensus and data as far as the evolutionary process is far from the truth. Darwinism and any other explanation of evolution is moot. And moot means arguable, so I will argue it now. As early as the 1980s, Niles Eldridge and others postulated the theory of punctuated equilibria as a cause of episodic evolution, whereby there are boundaries in the strat stratigraphic record where species below the boundary no uh, exist and above the boundary no longer exist. But above the boundary, there are new species. 
And the most recent periodical I can bring your eyes to is what we're looking at in high def. And I want to talk a little bit and let's just get this to the right size. I want to talk a little, oh, that wasn't it. I want to talk a little bit about human evolution tonight. Before we get to the preparedness piece of this presentation, I want to take your eyes over to the left here. Evolutionary history of Homo sapiens. These are taxonomic lines right here. See this lateral position here? If we come over here to this lateral line, which means the this is the instantaneous speciation of these particular groups. And if we come over here and look where it corresponds to, it corresponds to a major dip in the magnetic field. The magnetic field reaches almost 10% the Neanderthal extinction, and then the instantaneous speciation of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven types of hominids. And let's come back to this drop down in the Vatum. The geomagnetic field intensity drops rapidly here after the Blake. And let's follow this line. Another mass extinction and a speciation line. Let's come to this drop down massive drop down in the magnetic field. And let's just follow it through. Haplogroup B ended and boom, a new species began. And you can just bring it all down through any of these. The Iceland Basin drop down, boom. Mitochondrial Eve. Homo sapiens sapien began. So you can clearly see here the correlation with magnetic field intensity and mass extinction. What I mean by mass extinction is that on these boundaries, the species that existed below it are no longer there. And there's new species above. And you can see how rapidly it, it increases as we move towards today. Look at this. On the lowest field intensity drop, the largest amount of speciation happened in Homo sapiens. Are you picking it up? We just put it down. Hardcore. And if you follow the work of Randall Carlson, one of the most prestigious and influential catastrophic geologists on the planet alive today, We can see here the great year, the clock cycle. The cycle of cosmic catastrophe that is overlain by the astrological cycle. The procession of the equinoxes. This is one of the most cutting edge breakthrough pieces of geologic science ever reported in human history. And I believe that Randall Carlson will be well remembered in the future because of this pictorial. It also corresponds to many petroglyphs as well as the Iron Cross and the symbol that we now use to represent Jesus, where he was hung, supposedly. But based on geologic evidence, Randall Carlson overlaid all of the current known geologic data on massive catastrophic events, glacial in origin, on this particular graphic, and they all fall on a clock cycle. And this particular flexure point is the most extreme, with the most correlative events ever over the last 250,000 years. So this would be the flexure point we would be most worried about. And guess what, folks? We are right here at this point today, right here on this green dot, where 26,000 years ago, the onset of the late Wisconsinian Ice Age 
ensued. Maximum glacial period began. And based on every hypothesis in all of my studies, which began in 1989, three decades of work. In the middle of it, I was, anyway, we are on a amazing flexure point in time on the grand scale. And I created this timeline to destruction yesterday, 24 hours ago. My thoughts on what may happen in your future. Best case scenario, based on all scientific knowledge and facts and those willing to go out on a limb and share them with you. We are here today. <clears throat> in my humble opinion, there are less than three years to prepare for when things start to get bad. They will be triggered not by geologic events, but those will have some effect. Volcanoes will continue to erupt in epic fashion. Large earthquakes will occur. Any one of these phenomena may spark the onset of the Stone Age for an extended period. But it's in my opinion that the sun will do that on its own. As we enter solar cycle 25, it's my belief that a major flare will affect the grid in a bad way. We have historical evidence to suggest this is exactly what's going to happen. A plasma filament alone, earth facing, could literally fry the grid on one third of the planet as we watch it happen. Now, what I mean by this is we're going to have some advance warning. The financial markets may fail before the sun takes the grid out. And if that happens, it's going to be a storybook scenario. You get priced out of things. The sun fries the grid. Boom! Back into the Stone Age. And then a decade later, as things continue to get worse, the population is reduced to 80% less than current. The decade after that, the sun flares. The magnetic reversal is in full effect. Cosmic rays rain down and everybody evolves. I'm going to be 80 at this point, but I'm sure going to be prepared for the things that will unfold in my future. Are you prepared? The first thing you need to do is keep calm and think it through. There is no reason why we need to get irrational or crazy about the upcoming events, which have happened time and time again. <clears throat> the first thing you want to look at is volcanoes. If you're looking to relocate or prepare, a lot of people send me information. They want to know what to do. This is the video for you. And these are all the steps you need to prepare. Share this with people that are asking these questions. The first step is locate all the volcanoes on earth that are active or potentially active. You're looking at the potentially active volcanoes on earth. If you're in any of these red zones, you need to move away at least 300 miles or create a bug out plan. Now the graphic I'm showing you now are the most active and potentially dangerous volcanoes on the planet for the next 100 years. If you're near any of these red dots, you need to be within, you need to go 300 miles or further away. And now there are many other layers. In fact, there's a dozen other layers that we're going to blow your mind with. This is not an easy task. If you cannot move to the correct area, you need a bug out plan to get to one. The next level 
that you need to check is seismicity. Where are the fault zones and the danger zones? And move away from them. If you're not living in a white zone or a light blue zone or even a green zone, you're in a no-go zone. White, baby blue, and green are the only places on this map I would ever have a house or a bug out plan. And then there's the nuclear power plants. Do not live downwind of any of these pink spots. Do not live within 500 miles of a pink spot. Do not live downwind from a pink spot ever. And then we lay over the nuclear power plant and the fault risk and stay away. Now, how about high voltage transmission lines? During a major solar flare or an outburst, they are going to light the forest and the buildings on fire in these regions. Do not live near any of these lines. Be at least 100 miles from a high voltage transmission line. They will light the forest on fire and they will threaten your future. This is another danger zone. Depending on the proton event or the solar flare or the CME or the plasma filament eruption, it doesn't matter. Surface lines will be charged. They will spark to the ground and they will light the forest on fire. Stay away from the grid. All power stations are connected to the grid. This is a power station map. If you live in any one of these circular regions, you need to move away or have an alternate plan to bug out because the forests in these regions will burn. <clears throat> now, gas transmission and hazardous liquid pipelines abound. There are over, over, over 4 million miles of them in the U.S. alone. Learn where they are and do not homestead or bug out in an area where these lines are. In a major geologic event that will affect the entire globe, these will go offline, begin leaking, and or crack, and they will pollute every single gallon of groundwater in your region, and they will kill you slowly, sicken you with no data or get away from these hazardous liquid pipelines. Are you starting to pick up how difficult it is to, to actually put it down? Now, you need to check the paleogeographic record. And I'm showing it to you because no one will. Here are the temperature patterns for the Little Ice Age according to NOAA. I moved to the yellow and white air square region because it's geophysically the safest place on Earth. There are no transmission pipelines. There are no nuclear power plants downwind. There are no fault lines, there are no volcanoes, and there are many others that have chosen the same place. Then check the temperature during the Maunder and the Dalton minimum and, and get away from the blue areas because it's going to be cold and it's going to be hard to live there. Stay in the light blue or the baby blue or even the yellow. Alaska is looking good in some regions. And there are more considerations. If a major event happens and the sun stops moving, we need to get underground immediately. When the solar flare event or the mega flare happens, you'll have 12 to 24 hours to get to safety. We're going to see it happen. If you see it flare, you may make it. If you see the after effects of the flare, it's going to hit you on the globe. Move near caverns. Locate them. Look for coal mines, especially defunct ones. They're all over the, all over North America. Where I live, there are coal mines and mineral mines and caverns and caves. Everything I need, as well as high mountain peaks. Get up to elevation. But most importantly.
<laughs> yes, you need skills. You need skills. Because even if you pick the right place to live and you're not prepared, you're going to be out in the cold. You're going to need energy generation, wood gasifiers, solar panels, protected by Faraday cages. Here's a free 78 item prepper checklist on things you need to prep. Water and hydration, the number one. Rainwater collection, filtration systems, food stockpiles, dry goods, food rations, cooking fuel sources, hello wood, and on and on. 46 survival skills to keep you entertained in the backyard and maybe allow you to survive and thrive in the times to come. How about foraging, wild crafting? Do you know even how to find medicinal herbs? There's a lot to learn, how to fish, how to hunt. And the most important thing <laughs> is the spiritual soundness. Ten ways to feel spiritually sound. Gratitude over desire is the number one. The clock is ticking. Prepare at the ranch.com for long-term survival food. You can survive and thrive in the future. You need to learn how to start growing food now. Wild craft, wild harvest. Create a click, create a group. If you can't move, create a bug out plan and get people to sign on to it. You're going to need eight to 10 people to make this happen. It's anyone's guess how it will, will unfold. Anyone's guess. And I'm looking for the right graphic. And it's missing. <laughs> Damn. Where did it go? There it is. Timeline to destruction. If this has any modicum of truth. And look. The last three decades I've been working on this. I don't think anyone can create a better graphic of the potential timeline on how it will unfold. <clears throat> and I've been very generous. You have a, just a few years before the financial systems collapse and the world wars begin. They will move you into smart cities. AI will be in complete control. They will know every single one of your moves. If you're not in a rural area, if you have not opted out early, they are watching you. Start growing food and learn how to fail. Do it early. Stop getting squirrely. Get your head straight. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance as the system breaks down. Now getting your shit together requires a level of honesty you can't even imagine. It's taken me decades to get honest. There's nothing easy about realizing you're the only one that's been holding you back this whole time. Do it now. Do it for you. Do it for humanity. But be spiritually sound when you do it. And love everyone in the process. And be safe. We love you. That's a boom.